Creighton Basketball on KMTV, your Action 3 news station. Brought to you by Lexus of Omaha. Saturday night on the road at the Missouri Valley Conference, and you can expect a tough fight. And tonight, the Creighton Blue Jays enter the danger zone, known as Carver Arena in Peoria, Illinois. Good evening, everybody. This is Creighton Blue Jay basketball on your KMTV Action 3 News Station. I'm Travis Justice. Nick Ball with me again tonight. And Nick, the Blue Jays take on the Braves, a team that has struggled this year, but they have some talent. They absolutely have some talent, but they're really right now. Lost six straight under first-year coach. Geno Ford out of Kent State. Problem is right now, the last three games, they're giving up 80 points per game and allowing opponents to shoot 50% from the field, it's the depth that's killing Bradley. They have three really good players in Walt Lemon Jr., Dyrica Sims Edwards, and Taylor Brown, who we're gonna talk about in a little bit, but it's that depth right now that they can't overcome. And of course, the Blue Jays have a lot of depth. Yes. They can really punch teams right in the mouth list. T time now for our players to watch, brought to you by Alexis. And you mentioned Taylor Brown. He sat out last season because he had a heart condition, but he's come back and has had a great start to the year. Yeah, he really has, 15 points per game. He's been in double figures for Bradley in 14 of their 15 games. He's a mid-range guy. Shoots 50% from the floor inside the arc. At 6'6", he's incredibly versatile. He can be a matchup problem for Creighton tonight. Look for Taylor Brown to be really aggressive. Taylor Brown is second to the Missouri Valley Conference in double-doubles. Second only to Creighton's Doug McDermott. And Doug, I tell you what, his season gets better and better. This morning on ESPN's College Game Day, Jay Billis names him the, the mid-season player of the year. Player of the year yeah. across the country. Unbelievable. Other guys naming Jared Sullinger, Jeremy Lamb, Michael Kidd Grillchrist. Player of the year, Tug McDermott by Jay Billis. He's outstanding. 24 points per game, 60% from the floor. Nation's second leading scorer. Numbers down a little bit in Valley play, but that's to be expected when teams really key on you and they want to take you away. No one wants to let the second leading scorer in the country go off for 30 against him. But Doug got back on track the other night against Drake, had 24 points, seven rebounds. You know Dougie Boy's going to be ready to go tonight. You know, you never want to take anything for granted, but this is a game the Blue Jays should win. This is a nerve-wracking game because, like I said, they have three players. Bradley has three players in Sims Edwards, Lemon Jr., and Taylor Brown who can really play. If they get it going, Creighton's going to be in for a long night. Get ready for the Saturday night showdown between the Braves and the Blue Jays coming up next on your KMTV Action 3 News Station. A celebration at Carver Arena as Dave Snell, the longtime play-by-play -play announcer for the Bradley Braves, is honored tonight by broadcasting his 1,000th game for the Bradley Braves. And, and Dave's one of the good guys in the business. Time now for the starting lineups from Carver Arena. First for the Bradley Braves. Come into tonight's record with a 5-10 record overall, 0-3 in the Missouri Valley Conference. Uh, familiar lineup for the Bradley Braves, going with Walt Lemon Jr. at one guard spot. Taylor Brown, and, uh, you got Dyrica Sims Edwards, pardon me, Walter Lemon Jr., and then you also have Jordan Prosser at the guards. At the forward positions, Taylor Brown, and the man in the middle is going to be Shiok Shiok. For the Creighton Blue Jays, going with the familiar lineup of Antoine Young, Jahans Managa, Grant Gibbs, Gregory Echenique, and of course our player to watch is Doug McDermott. The Blue Jays 12 and 2 on the season, 12 and 2 and 1 in the Missouri Valley Conference, and an impressive 4 and 1 away from the confines of the Century Link Center. The Bradley Braves, as it goes dark inside the Carver Arena, coached by Gino Ford, is in his first season with the Braves, again 5 and 10 overall, but he did spend some time at Kent, very successful seasons at Kent, where he had a 68 and 37 record. The Blue Jays, coached by Greg McDermott, in his second season on the Hilltop. 35 and 18 overall division one record 184 wins 149 losses of course he also had stops at iowa state and northern iowa time now for the keys to the game here's nick Baugh. first for the bradley braves they got to win the free throw battle they're going to attack the rim and a free throws easy points key number two they got to contain doug mcdermott 24 points per game Key number three, they got to get some confidence. They've lost six in a row. They got to get things going early. First five, ten minutes of this game, really critical for Bradley. And for Creighton, transition defense. Bradley's terrific in the open floor. They got to get back. Key number two, got to rebound the ball to establish the tempo so they can get out and run. And key number three, dribble penetration. They have to guard Bradley and keep him out of the paint. Those you know, are your keys to the game. I'm a little flustered because this might be the longest starting lineup I've ever seen, Nick. It's one of these nights where it takes forever, and the, and the Braves go around and slap all the hands of the kids gathered around. If you're on the, an opposing sideline and you're ready to get out there, what does this do to you? It, 
it's awful, to be honest with you. You sit there, you get ramped up. It's Everything's one big buildup before the game. You get to the arena an hour or so before. You shoot around. You go through warm-ups. You're just building up that competitive energy, and you're ready to go right now, and then you got to sit there and wait. It's almost like a dog on a leash, and you just want to get let off the leash. But I've never been a fan of what Bradley does here, where they get all the, the, the fans, and they stand right on the baseline and the sideline, and oftentimes it's snowy or it's wet outside. Now, it's not bad today here in Peoria, Illinois, but sometimes you track in dust and some dirt and whatnot and make the floor slick. Never liked it. I needed all the, I needed all the traction I could get. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't the fastest, quickest guy to begin with. I can't be sliding around out there. So I've never loved what Bradley does with surrounding everybody out. It's great to connect the players with the fans, but certainly is a long production. It's very unique at the Missouri Valley Conference, and it's by far the longest starting lineup in the Missouri Valley Conference, but it has not deterred other teams. Again, 0-3 in the Valley are the Bradley Braves, and they've gotten blown out here at home. Yeah, uh, again, in the Valley play so far, they've given up 80 points per game. They've got outscored by 59 points in three Valley games. Teams are shooting 50% on them, but Creighton's out for revenge. Everybody remembers last year with the snowstorm that came through Peoria and changed the timing of the game. The game was supposed to be at night. It was played in the afternoon. And it's unbelievable to think about of all of Creighton's Road Valley losses, the Bradley loss was by the biggest margin. Eight points last year, lost 69-61. Creighton lost a whole bunch of close games last season. Me, Don Daly and Kip Kissinger, our referees tonight. There's Gregory Echenique, who go against Brown for the jump ball. Brown's got some ups. Great athlete. The opening tip goes to the Braves. We're underway at Carver Arena in Peoria, Illinois. The hands from Gibbs. Gibbs. Nice pass from Antoine Young up to Gibbs. Out of bounds, knocked, about, knocked away. Going to be belong to the Blue Jays. Good defensive effort by the Blue Jays to start things out. It's going to be imperative for Grant Gibbs to do a good job on Taylor Brown without fouling them, without fouling him, because they can't afford to have Gibbs on the bench. Good hands there from Gibbs. There's McDermott. Can't finish the offensive rebound. Goes to Echenique, fresh 35 for the Blue Jays. A rare miss that close by Doug McDermott. So good in it. Open side pick and roll, and McDermott, again, shooting 61% from the floor, obviously makes that shot at a very high rate. Foul on Echenique away from the basketball. I think they're calling on Giants. Managa, moving screen there. You know, like most offensive coordinators in football, they script their first handful of plays. Greg McDermott does the same thing, a set play to try and free up Echenique, and Managa gets a little overzealous trying to screen Prosser. Cheerleaders right behind us. <laughs> the Braves score their first bucket. There's Brown, and he hits the three-pointer. Number three, four, three. Braves took the early lead. His 12th three of the season. Only shooting 30% from beyond the arc. That's a bad sign if he starts to get those shots going down. Doug gets it to go that time. Strong move in the double team. It all stems from good ball movement there. Swinging around the perimeter. Opposite side of the floor. Oftentimes the best side to score from. And McDermott scores. Unbelievable. We talked about in the open. Jay Billis naming Doug McDermott the midseason player of the year. McDermott with a rebound. Jay's looking to push the pace. Here's Managa. Twenty on the shot clock. Dermott gets it off to Gibbs. Good defense by the Braves. Antoine Young, little pump fake, kicks it back over to Gibbs for three. Grant Gibbs buries it in the corner. You know who did a great job on that play was Echenique to spin, get a piece of the paint, create a closeout for Antoine Young to drive and create the shot for Grant Gibbs. Subtle little play for Echenique to keep the play alive. She acted 
the miss. Rebound goes to the Blue Jays. There's he McDermott. Is. A little reverse underneath and the pump fake. Well, he's got great court awareness of where the defenders are at to use the rim as a shield and go up in the opposite side and score. Always seems to get out ahead of that pack in transition to get an easy basket. That's what the Blue Jays want to do. They want to take this Bradley crowd out of it early. And you want to get out and run and utilize your depth. We talked about how Bradley struggles in that area. Uh, Lemon Jr., that's just his 11th made three of the season. Look at Doug. Going up strong, hoop and a harm for Doug McDermott. Antoine Young pushing it, even off of a made basket with a little bit of purpose. See a little flip from behind, gets Taylor Brown caught, and off the window for two. Chance for three to hard way for number three, Doug McDermott. You've seen Antoine do that a lot lately of trying to push the ball and then flip it back to McDermott. He's often flipped it back to Doug where he's too far away from the basket where he's not really a threat to even catch and shoot. Antoine got a little bit better depth that time. And that created an opportunity to drive for Doug McDermott. Doug with seven of the ten points for the Blue Jays. Straighten up 10-6. There's Brown, 15. In and out. Rebound to Echenique. Gibbs inside, back out to Gibbs. Gahan's Managa. On the road, you'll take rims like that. Yeah, friendly bounce, but that's what it's all about right there. Feeding Doug McDermott, collapsing the defense, and everybody a willing passer, and Managa, a great shooter, gets a great look and knocks it down. Out of bounds, gonna belong to the Blue Jays. This communication between Brown and Prosser. You mentioned that game a year ago. The Bradley Braves came into the contest with an 11-game losing streak. And it was a weird day. They had the blizzard hit. They moved the game time up to like 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Nobody was happy about it, but, and the Jays were out of sync. Bradley with a six-game losing streak heading into this game, and the Braves looking to prove something at home. Good crowd for a Saturday night downtown Peoria. There's Doug McDermott. Get him nine now. They can't stop him, Nick. Well, you, you relax for a second, and he knows angles so well to seal the defender and go right up and score. All it takes is for that split second for you to relax, and McDermott will make you pay. That's a start for the Blue Jays offensively right now. Just beautiful basketball. Bradley looking to end an 8-0 Creighton run over the last minute 10. He can't buy a bucket. Here come the Blue Jays again. Question is, will Doug McDermott have double digits by the time we get to the first media timeout? Antoine Young. Foul on Gregory Echenique. And we got a timeout on the floor. Blue Jays like the way they start here in Peoria, 15-6. Back to Carver Arena after these messages on your KMTV Action Radio Station. Jays start the game off six of eight from the field. Doug McDermott, four of five, already nine points, Nick. Well, it's six assists on six made baskets. Creighton doing a great job offensively, led by their stud, Doug McDermott. Like you said, nine points there. A quick one in the paint, turn over that right shoulder with the left hand. And six points off of two threes for Bradley. And watching film last night with the Blue Jays, they talked about they want to take away the paint first. And if there was a shot they were willing to give up, it was a three-point basket for whether it was Brown or Walt Lemon Jr. Both those guys not known for their three-point shooting, and they've knocked down two threes so far. You really couldn't have drawn up a much better start. No. You know, it's always important to get off to a good start, but it's really important with a team that's reeling like Bradley is where they're struggling to gain some confidence. If you're the Blue Jays, you want to come on the road and really jump on them early to try and let them know it's not going to happen tonight. The Brown go up for the rebound, but Ethan Rogge with a quick hand to slap it right out of his hand. He's really improved his all-around game. His freshman year, he was just a catch-and-shoot guy, and that's about it. And he's really, really expanded his game, become a better defensive player, better rebounder. And quickly going to the zone is Geno Ford. 
pad Doug McDermott. You see Wide open. Right on the baseline, set play to screen the, the back line of the zone. Couldn't quite get it to McDermott. Casey sort of lost right now in the out-of-bounds out play. Antilla Brown lost his glasses. You know, if it's possible to make goggles look cool, no offense to Tyler McKinney, but Taylor Brown looks a lot better in, in goggles than you do, buddy. He's got some cool ones on, doesn't he? He does. Out of back man-to-man, -man. Gino Ford will switch defenses. Roggy. Quick release on the three, and when Ethan Roggy heats up right away, it could be a long night for the Braves. Yeah, number one in the nation in three-point in three field goal percentage as a team, the Blue Jays are. And Roggy, one of the assassins from beyond the arc. Enriquez Sims Edwards can't get at the ball. The Braves continue to struggle from the field. Off the foot of Grant Gibbs. Turnover by the Blue Jays. One of the impressive things about Grant Gibbs, even in the midst of that turnover, is because of his knee and how bad it is that he doesn't have a chance to practice every day, passing is a rhythm and a timing thing. And his numbers are still fantastic, even though he hasn't practiced every single day. And on the season, 85 assists, 32 turnovers without practicing and working on that timing. That's impressive. Braves have missed their last four shots. They're just going to force, they want to force contested jump shots against the Bradley Braves. <laughs> Tops it, hoop in the hall. For the Braves finally get a bucket. It's a rare basket for Thompson. Thompson's more of a rebound putback guy or a drive and dish and score kind of a guy. Don't really see him score much with his back to the basket. Good basket for Thompson, nicknamed Sticks. Long and a great shot blocker. Third in the Missouri Valley in blocks. Austin Chapman now running the point for the Blue Jays. Josh Jones also into the game. Inside to McDermott. Back out to Rock. Long pass to Gibbs. And on the shot clock for the Blue Jays. Gibbs will pull up. He's got five. Gibbs does such a good job of letting the game come to him there. Wanted to pass it, but saw that there was an out of control closeout. Good drive and stick for Gibbs. His fourth made three of the year. Now four of 13 from downtown. A shot Creighton is willing to give up. Josh Jones has it swatted away by Thompson. The Blue Jays get it back. 20 on the shot clock. Now 10 for the Blue Jays. Gibbs throws it away. Graves in transition. Where they're dangerous. Charge. Heck of a play there from Austin Chapman to recognize that Jake Easton had his sight set on the rim and was out of control and to set his feet and take the charge. Beautiful. Take another look at his Chapman sets his feet. Selton Sneed having a conversation with Greg McDermott about the coach's line. The, that charge taken was the 21st taken this year by the Blue Jays. Now, a new rule this year is that half circle underneath the bucket that is supposed to, you, you know, you, you can't call it when they're in that circle. Right. You can't make that call. And I was thinking, well, has that affected the game much this year? And it hasn't no. at all. In fact, a year ago at this time, the Blue Jays had taken 13 charges. Now they have 21 this year, so it really hasn't affected the game that much. No, they got a lot of different guys. Austin Chapman takes charges. Grant Gibbs takes charges. They have more guys that are willing to do that, but certainly they are 
that has not really affected the game, but I like the fact that if that's a rule, you might as well have a line on the floor to let you know what the deal is. Being asked a question by Kip Kissinger, I don't know exactly. I had to say, Kip, we we're on the air. <laughs> Figured a Wesley. We'd like guy to have a conversation with you. Whether the Seahawk basket was the three. Uh, they're checking to see if Seahawk Seahawks three, if his foot was on the line. Maybe they, and that's what Greg was asking. Yeah. You know what? You have every right to ask. At one point, especially the Braves trying to keep it close. Yeah. Take a look at Geno Ford there. Like you said, Kent State enjoyed great success, won back to back MAC titles. So Taking a look at Sheox 3. Tough to tell from that angle. Sure looked like it was from beyond the arc from my vantage point. Be where his lead foot was would be questioned from that angle. It's yeah. hard to tell from where we're at. So Greg McDermott throws the red flag for the challenge. Every basket so important. Great leads the all-time series of the Braves, 42-41. A lot of that has been made up over the last 10 years as the Jays have won 19 of the last 24 battles with the Braves. And I think this has a storied basketball tradition. Yeah, no here. question. Of course, a Final Four team back in 1954. They went to the Sweet 16 back in 2006. That was a good team. Beat Kansas. That you was remember a really that? Really good team. I, I, I do remember that. I was <laughs> with the Blue Jays. I was my red shirt year in the midst of the transfer, but that was a great team. Patrick O'Brien, Somerville, and Ruffin, Crouch, all those guys, just great players. Had a great season. Defeated Kansas. Defeated Pittsburgh. Go to the Sweet 16. You know, the Braves were on a little bit of a run. Just they got it under double digits again. That's a good move by Greg. I mean, it kind of takes them right out of their rhythm. Yeah. Well, especially if you feel like his foot was on the line, every basket's so important. But yeah, it, indirectly, it can negate any momentum that could have been gained for Brad. You hear official tell Greg McDermott he's behind the line, so the play stands. Three point basket good for Shea. Crowd likes it. The crate been a little bit out of sync offensively here for the last couple of minutes. See if Austin Chapman can get them organized and get them in better positions. Of course, next dead ball will be a media timeout. Working on Taylor Brown, it looks like, over on the sideline, trying to get some blood cleared up. As this game had come to a screeching halt. Can't get it to fall. Here ball, come the Braves. Ball really never got inside 15 feet. You got to make the defense collapse at some point. There's Brown in and out. Martino with a rebound. Jays need a bucket. Austin Chapman kind of throws it up, goes, turns into more of a pass to Ethan Rogge. No rim, so no restart on the shot clock. Under 20 now. Grant Gibbs for three. Are you kidding me? They have to call a timeout as Gibbs knocks down another triple. Gibbs shooting better than 40% from three. And the Blue Jays back on top by 11. The 30-second timeout. You always love when people are rewarded for being patient on that. 
kick out from Ethan Rogge after the missed shot from Chapman. Gibbs had an opportunity to take a three. Instead, reverses the basketball, gets more of a rhythm shot, and buries another three. Blue Jays here in Peoria have won seven of the last ten. However, lost two straight. Starters back on the floor for Greg McDermott. So here come the Braves. They've got some production from Shiok. Brown and Thompson. Let's see what they do with it here. at six foot eight to put the ball on the deck that many times to hit a 12 foot floater from Shiok. Seen the inside and the outside game for him. Brown is such an offensive force for the Braves. See how winded he is at the end of this game as he gets the tough assignment of guarding the Durham. That's the problem is you expend a lot of your energy. Gregory Echenique's mug down below. When we come back, he'll be shooting two free throws. Time out on the floor. Ten minutes to go in the first half of the Blue Jays on top 23 to 14. Back to Carver Arena right after this match. Gregory Echenique is going to come back out of the timeout and go to the free throw line, and here's why. He is totally gets mugged underneath. He'll shoot two. Where you cross your fingers with Gregory, he's a 48% free throw shooter from the line. He was a great free throw shooter last year. Really has struggled this year. It's become a mental issue, mental hump for him. But see Gibbs on the pick and roll, just such good timing and instincts to deliver the basketball. Not much blue inside Carver Arena, but we do want to welcome all the Blue Jay faithful gathered over at Harris tonight for a viewing party. I know Mike West has a good crowd over there. They're getting together like, like Blue Jay faithful and watching Absolutely. this together. There, there's a there's a Creighton fan for you. Looks happy to be on TV, <laughs> doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> so Echenike goes to the line. First time tonight. He was spending some extra time at the walkthrough afterwards, shooting the free throws. It's the first one. Confidence builder. Yeah. He's got to have a few good games where you knock down a, your throws, and then you'll feel better and more comfortable at the line. Hits them both. Jays back on top by 11, 25-14. Crosser, spin move on Echenike, can't get a go, out of bounds off of McDermott. Good contest from Gregory Echenike to make Crosser's shot just a little bit more difficult. But Doug McDermott's got to do a little bit better job boxing out and let Sheok just run and jump. The Braves got a press 35. What Bradley likes to do, just try and shake you and make you one-on-one. -on -one. Out of bounds off of Thompson to the Blue Jays. Get the possession. See if they try to go down low. A 10-2 advantage of the Braves in the paint. And a great barometer of easy baskets, and Creighton's had layups right at the rim. But right now, and it's been that way all season, doesn't matter what the Blue Jays do. Shooting 64% from the field, shooting 80% from the three-point line. A rare miss by Doug again. There's Echenike, goes up strong, and he'll go to the line. No one's more upset with himself right now than... Doug McDermott, he's furious that Gibbs is going to say, hey, man, you messed up my set. <laughs> good set play, and Doug usually just good as gold underneath the basket, laying it around the rim, but big Echenike clears it. See if he can go back to the line and make it four in a row. That's a tall order. That is. Well, he's got three in a row. replaces 
Greg's still wearing those lucky pink shoes. Yeah. Don't forget the pink out game coming to the Century League Center on the 28th of January. Four for four from the line is Gregory. Lots Carver Arena. One of the bigger facilities in the Missouri Valley Conference, but it's also one of the older ones. They can use some renovations here. Yep. Out of bounds. They're going to say off of Echenique. 16 on the shot clock for the bridge. Great in executing the defensive scatter report game plan just perfectly at this point. Shot clock. Well, little Junior with that left hand, just a couple rhythm dribbles to get you backing up, get your hands down. Knock down a long two. Jay's still up 11. Going back inside, kick it back out to Antoine Young. Antoine from 17. Good hustle from Walt Lemon Jr. to come back and contest Antoine Young. That's what caused the miss. I got Grant, yeah. Tyreekus Sims Edwards. Falling away. Can't get it. Shiok with the rebound and the putback. Shiok, Shiok. Shiok, Shiok. Board, board. With the putback. Coach McDermott talked about how important rebounding was going to be this evening at shoot around. Echeneke feeds McDermott. Doug now with 11. Scores in so many different ways, whether it's a conventional post up, an offensive rebound, put back, transition layup, or they the basket cut and finish. You have to have incredible mental discipline if you're guarding McDermott, and you cannot relax for any moment. Jalen Crawford. Here come the Blue Jays. Ribs for three. Jays get back on defense. Tyreekus Sims Edwards, former NBA three. 29 21, Blue Jays. With that double team off of Antoine Young. Inside, here's McDermott, kicks it back out. Jahens Managa. Big three-pointer just by a, the Canadian. Canadian Red Bull. Such a difficult combination when you have big guys that you need to come with a double team. That means you're picking your poison and giving up threes. And, oh, by the way, Creighton leads the nation in three-point shooting through field goal percentage as a team. Out of bounds. Made a bad pass. Time out on the floor, 6.30 to go in the first half. Blue Jays, 5 of 7 from behind the arc, leading 32-21 back to Carver Arena after this match. If you're tuning in and going, what's this basketball <laughs> game? I thought it was Comedy Saturday on CBS. Saturday coming up at 3 a.m. followed by primetime Saturday at 4 a.m. But right after the game, 48 hours mystery in its entirety coming up after the Blue Jays and the Braves here in Peoria, Illinois. We're great on top of the Bradley Braves, 32-21. And it's been a another hot shooting night for the Blue Jays. 11 of 19 for the field, 57, 58 percent. If we're going to round up five of seven from behind the three-point line, 71%. Well, the problem is, uh, going against the Blue Jays in, in this high-octane offense, you kind of have to pick your poison and take one element away, whether you're going to take away the post-ups in the paint or the three-point line. And Bradley really isn't doing either right now. They're trying to come with a double team, but Creighton doing a nice job of passing out of that, knocking down threes, but yet they've still been able to score in the post as they've engelled at 12, yes. four points in the paint advantage. As Echenica goes right back there, He's going to go to the free throw line again. And the Braves really, when they get it down to the big fella, have no answer for Greg. No. Well, and Coach McDermott is doing a nice job of diagramming. See how he's all by himself underneath the basket, creating set plays for back picks and cross screens to free up McDermott and Echenique underneath the rack. Gregory, 5 of 5 from the line. Need a game like this to remedy those demons of doubt.
Make it six of six for the big fella. Good rhythm. And He's improving line. his average quite a bit. <laughs> That'll help. <laughs> Here's Eastman with it. Avery Dingman in the game for the Blue Jays. Nice pass into the top. It's going to be out of bounds off the Braves. Good idea. Because yeah, the Blue Jays were a half a step late as they came with a double team on Taylor Brown, but a little too much heat on that pass from Brown to Thompson. Blue Jays going with Antoine Young, Managa, Ethan Rogge, Avery Dingman, and Gregory Echenique. Rogge. Jeez, are you kidding me? Quick trigger. Ethan Rogge for three. Six of eight from downtown. Days are hot in Peoria. Here's Eastman, kicks it back out. In and out by Dyrika Sims Edwards, and Echenique gets the rebound. Jays in transition. Under five and a half in the first half to go. 37-21. Antoine Young had to alter with that left hand. Here come the Braves. Eastman beats Thompson. Look out for low. Well, they're dangerous. That was key number one. It keys the game. Getting back in transition. They're great in the open floor. Here's Dingman. 15 on the shot clock for the Blue Jays. Did they get it inside to Echenique? Managoff for three. Rattles it in. Uh, Canadian Red Bull. If you're Gino Ford, you don't have an answer for it. The Jays just are not missing. A lot of them are pretty open, but some of them have been contested. The last two for sure have been contested. Eastman tries to counter with a three. Echenique <laughs> just says, that's my ball. ball. Get out of here, little fella. <laughs> Inside, out of bounds. Going to belong to the Blue Jays. That went off Brown. So here come the Blue Jays with Doug McDermott. Seahawk back for the Braves. And Austin Chapman. Thompson. And Walton Jr. 40 points. Gibbs comes in as well. With four minutes left in the first half. It Is it seven threes now? Lost count. I think it's seven. Shut him up. Doug back out to Gibbs. Fifteen on the shot clock. Turnover by the Blue Jays. Going to call a foul. Great foul. Foul number one. Time out on the floor. Forty to twenty-three. Blue Jays have taken the Braves out of it. Do they can extend that lead when we come back to Carver Arena after these messages? Had an 11 2 run over the last three minutes, getting it done inside and outside. Nick, look at Sims Edwards, who's guarding Managa. Help creates a rotation for Taylor Brown. Too late. Managa buries the three. Seven of nine as a team from downtown. Three different Blue Jays have knocked down a three. Gibbs, two of three. Managa, three for three. And Rogge, two for two. And I was going to bring that. We, you've got total balance in tonight's scoring. I mean, McDermott leads the way with 11, but you got Echenique with six, all those from the free throw line. You got Gibbs with eight, you got Madigal with nine, and you got Ethan Rogge with six. So there's some balanced scoring for the Blue Jays tonight. And Antoine Young just setting the table for his teammates. Five assists, zero turnovers in this first half. Blue Jays 12 assists on 13 made baskets. It's all been keyed, though, by getting stops and rebounds executing this game plan perfectly. Eastman, he hits the free throw. Play they walked over, over, shoot around, a little flare play for Eastman. And Dingman, that's where he's got to improve, Travis, if he wants to get more minutes, be a little more sound on the defensive end of the floor. Rogge. Good Brown go up after that rebound. Well, they're dangerous. Chapman. Chapman. 
Just bumped him. You see that both hands come. And Sims Edwards on the crossover, and he fouls him. Here comes Antoine Young to get the young fella. Antoine Young replaces Chapman. Second charge taken by the Blue Jays this season. Second tonight. Just perfect execution defensively for the Jays on that set play, forcing him into the help. And Antoine set for the charge just exactly how they wanted to defend that play. He was set, and it was a good call. But when we're talking about the half circle, do you think now officials are giving the defender more of a well I think an advantage I, there I think they're so caught up sometimes in making sure they're outside the restricted area that as long as they're outside the restricted area they're gonna give the benefit of the doubt to the defensive player on the charge McDermott looking like Nowitzki. that's unstoppable looking like Nowitzki on the, on the fadeaway 13 points for Doug McDermott Through the good defense by McDermott, couldn't get his go. Doug with the rebound. There's Doug for three. You can tell that was off right from our angle. A little bit off balance. Usually got his feet underneath him. Not a great shot for McDermott. Bad pass by Avery Dingman. Here's Eastman. Tyrikis Sims Edwards for three. Coach Greg McDermott not happy, wants a timeout. He is at 42 29, but they're letting the Braves hang around, Nick. You can't let great success offensively make you lackadaisical on the defensive end. And for the most part, the Jays have done pretty good and staying locked in on the defensive end of the floor. But there, Dingman with a bad pass, springboarding the break. See there, trying to just. Throw it right into McDermott. Eastman sniffs it out. Eastman a little bit out of control, but knows where shooters are at. Finds Sims Edwards, and Sims Edwards knocks down his second three of the game. And they, Bradley's really struggled to score in the half court against Creighton, and that's why you want to do what you can, what you can to keep him out of transition. That's why you want to make sure you have defensive balance, have get guys get back, and also oftentimes you a bad shot or a Turnover obviously is going to lead to a fast break opportunity for Bradley, and that's really the only area where they've enjoyed success scoring. We're at the two minute mark. Blue Jays at 42 29 inside the Echenique. Look at the big fella. Nice move. Gregory Echenique wow. with a good move. There. About that up and under. The patience to look away the double team and come back with a nice move. Eastman backs Dougie in. He pulls back out, hits the jumper. Eastman's been the star of the first half of the Braves. Create a little bit of separation on McDermott and knocked it down. Coming to double team. It's a block away by Lemon Jr. Well, Lemon Jr. is a good shot blocker in his own right. Ten blocks on the year to guard spot. That's pretty impressive. Make it 11 now. We're up by 18. Coaches will always take a five second count over a turnover, over a live turnover, because you can set your defense. Zelda so Steve Green calls the foul on Gregory Echenique, his second personal. What was an 18 point game is down to 11, and now the Braves can get it down to double digits. And the last thing you want to do on the road on a Saturday night is give the home crowd. Some enthusiasm, something to cheer about. Well, and give this Bradley Brave team hope. 
and, and give them some momentum going into the second half. Eastman to Thompson, nice pass. Brandon Gibbs going to be called for the foul. Eastman getting into the paint there, just a little bit slow off of a kind of a weave throwback, a taxi there as McDermott's just a little bit slow as Eastman comes, and that's where Thompson's at his back best, is driving dish and throw up and scoring. Good foul, though, from Gibbs. Don't allow a three-point play, make him earn it from the free throw line. Gibbs came up holding that knee, Nick. Yeah, he's always beat up. Talking to Coach McDermott at shoot-around, said Gibbs has done less in the last two days of practice and he's really done all year and you know, Grant's got a plan with the training staff and with the coaching staff to make sure he feels as good as he possibly can with that knee come game time that's going to be a problem all year long 10 point game shot clock is off Blue Jays can hold for the final shot what do you do here we'd like to get me McDermott a touch You'd probably go with a pick and pop but you can go with something with Rogge and McDermott a double pick and have one of them rolling and one of them popping here. Got shooters everywhere and a distributor with the ball. Beautiful. Antoine kicks it out to Managa. Time expires and Brandon Graves go to the locker room, ending the first half on an 8 to 2 run over a minute 38 period. It was an 18-point lead for the Blue Jays. The Braves have cut it down to a 10-point lead, 44 to 34 at the half. Coming up at halftime, we're going to have an Action 3 News update as well as your first morning forecast. Nick and I will be back for your halftime stats and highlights after these messages on your KTV Action 3 News station. We are at halftime at Carver Arena in Peoria, Illinois, where the Blue Jays on top of the Bradley Braves, 44 to 34. Travis Justice, Nick Ball back with you. Nick, the Braves are like a bad itch. They just won't go away. Well, Creighton really helped them out in that final three minutes, or excuse me, four minutes. Three turnovers led to nine points for Bradley and got them back into this game. Creighton was enjoying great success and really was on the verge of knocking out the Bradley Braves, but then they got a little bit careless with the ball. And credit Bradley, that's where they're at their best in transition scoring. And they got a big lift off the bench from Eastman and Anthony Thompson really came off the bench and gave him 11 points and kept them in the game when Taylor Brown was struggling a little bit. He's got two personal fouls. As we take a look at the first half stats. The Blue Jays, you look at the numbers, they're doing all the right things. They're shooting the ball well, they're shooting a three well, and they're doing a great job for the free throw line. And it started hurting them inside with Doug McDermott and Gregory Echenique softened them up, a couple body blows, and then the perimeter shots just started raining. Seven of 12 from downtown, led by Managa, three of four from downtown. You got Grant Gibbs, two of three. Then you got Ethan Rogge, two for three as well. So Creighton offensively doing a great job. The problem is 34 points for Bradley. That's too much for, for Greg McDermott's liking. And they made threes as well, six of 11 from downtown. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. First for the Blue Jays, who got off a great start. Again, 15 of 27 from the field, seven of 12 from behind the, the three-point line. When you want to start the game in easy baskets, especially for your best player, your best scorer, and that's what Doug McDermott does such a good job of. And then he's also a willing passer. They come with the double team, pick your poison, hand down, man down. Managa buries the long range three. And then you look at the big fella making Robert Parrish proud with the up and under. And finishing, how about Echenique with six of six from the free throw line, doing a nice job knocking down his throws and hurting him with conventional post ups. You know, at one point, the Blue Jays were up 10 to 2 in the paint. The Braves did a good job going inside. It's now a 14 10 Blue Jay advantage, but the Braves have made some adjustments and got some, some bu buckets down low. Well, the game plan was to take away the paint and create jump shots. And Walt Lemon Jr. early in the game coming off, that's a shot Creighton was willing to give up, but Walt Lemon Jr. With the lefty stroke, knocks it down, and then Sims Edwards trailing it in transition. Those are broken four situations, and that's where they're at their best. And then you look at Eastman, who gave him a big lift, along with his other running mate, Sticks, Anthony Thompson, with the dunk. So they took what Creighton wanted to take away yep. and made it hurt him with the three-point shot, and that softened things up, and they could go inside Blue, then late. Blue Jays with seven turnovers. The big number. 15 
and Creighton had got a little, little lazy with the ball. Last game against Drake, Creighton had 18 turnovers, seven in that first half. That was the problem. That's the only blemish on this stat sheet in that first half. You talk about 55% from the floor, 44 points in the first half, but seven turnovers, that's what's allowed Bradley to hang around. Time now for our Meet the Blue Jays segment, brought to you by the Nebraska Soybean Board. Tonight, we're going to meet Jahans Managa. He's a 6'1 sophomore from Ontario, Canada. They calls him the Canadian Red Bull, and he really has been a spark for Creighton. Oh, he's been great. He's one of the team, two team captains, along with Grant Gibbs. He's an energy guy. The whole team feeds off him. Great positive attitude and a great shooter. Having a great night tonight. Nine points, three of four from downtown. Big fan of the Canadian Red Bull. When we come back, the second half will be underway. We'll also take a look at our Lexus players to watch, recap to see how they did in the first half. It's all coming, by, coming up in the second half right here on your KMTV Action Radio Station. Recapping our players to watch, brought to you by Lexus. First for the Bradley Braves, Taylor Brown. The Blue Jays have done a good job on him. Brown, a, you know, one of the top scorers in the Missouri Valley Conference, just one of four from the field. That was a three-pointer. He only has three points in the first half. He's got five turnovers and two fouls as well. They, he struggled to guard Doug McDermott. That got him into foul trouble. He hasn't been able to get into a rhythm at all. Doug McDermott, our player to watch for the great Blue Jays. And boy, just another typical half for Dougie. He did six and nine for the field. One and one for the free throw line. Three rebounds, one assist. He leads all scores with 13. Well, and looking at what needs to happen in this second stanza, you got to continue to get the ball inside. Creighton charts post touches, and there is a direct correlation between the amount of post touches and the offensive success that Creighton enjoys. If you want to continue to get those good looks from downtown, you got to collapse the defense. You got to have a steady diet of Echenique and McDermott, but you also have to take care of the ball. If Creighton turns, doesn't turn the ball over and throws the ball inside, they'll leave Peoria with a victory. Blue Jays will look for a better defensive effort here in the second half. In the last 32 meetings with Bradley, Creighton 15 and one when holding the Braves to 65 points or left. Just seven and nine when it allows the Braves to score more than 65. Right now, Bradley at 34. Thanks to an eight to two run to end the first half. Blue Jays starts the second half with the basketball. Durbin inside to Echenique. Kicks it back out. Antoine Young will draw the foul. They're gonna call it on Prosser. Sims no, Sims Edwards, Edwards, rather. Much better job from Bradley rotating once the ball went inside, and then Antoine Young on a closeout. Boy, might have got away with one there. It looked like there was a whole bunch of contact. But Antoine Young will go to the free throw line now. Antoine only 0 for 3 from the floor, but does have five assists, and that's his first basket of the game. 73% free throw shooter. The Jays been solid from the line tonight. First half. 7-7. Seven to seven. That's the first miss. A little bit different defensive look for Antoine Young as they've done a good job of hedging ball screens. You know, they've got to pick their poison. They've really allowed Antoine to come off screens the last couple of games and try to attack the score this evening. More hedging, and that's why Antoine hasn't taken as much shots, and he's looking to distribute. That's what you got to do. Just got to take what the defense gives you. It's the maturity of a senior point guard. Feeds Brown, and there's Browns starting the second half with two. I want to get him going in. Double figure scorer in 14 of Bradley's 15 games. The Braves have it under double digits. Nine point Creighton lead. Doug McDermott, a little hook shot on the, on the block. You see him just peek over his right shoulder. See, there's a lot of traffic. I'll go back to the left shoulder bucket. Just such a good feel, and he's so calm down in the paint. Foul on Managa. Foul on 12. John Hens, Managa. You see the sentiment, though, of doing all you can to keep the ball out of the paint. Willing to step off shooters to make sure that the ball is kicked out. Managa comes back. Good defense, but Braves get it back. 
Jahans and Grant Gibbs have to lead the Creighton and dives on the floor. Always end up there. A lot of floor burns on those two guys. Enriquez Sims Edwards. What a move. Just a little crease, and Sims Edwards hits it and finishes. on the shot clock for the Blue Jays. Inside, Echenique, look out below. That's a grown man move there as he just trapped the ball and pulled it away from the defense and finished. Good pass from Grant Gibbs. Lemon kicks it out. Shiok. Echenique, strong rebound. Now here come the Blue Jays. Gibbs. Thought about it. Pulled it back up. Inside to McDermott. With that left hand. He uses the right. He uses the left. No matter what he uses, the Braves can't stop him. 17 for number three. And what touch with the left hand off glass. Another great pass from Grant Gibbs. Sets the table. Wonderful. Blocked by Echenique. Echenique was beat defensively, got back, <laughs> and spiked it. They're going to create a new statistical category called spikes. <laughs> That's what Gregory does. And he had one the last yeah, game. Yeah, look at this. This thing almost shatters the hardwood. <laughs> Edwards had the right idea to go to Thompson. Thompson wasn't ready for it. So many blue jerseys, though, when that ball's dribbled into the paint. Doing a nice job of collapsing. Blue Jays like going a little run here. Great some distance. That's what good teams do. Grant Gibbs travel. Gibbs with Three turnovers in the game here. Just a little bit sloppy at times. Fundamentally sound player shouldn't lose track of his footwork there and walk. Wasn't pressured or anything like that. Brown. That's where he's special. He, he had guy. Grant Gribbs going one yeah. way. And look at Doug. You and I look at each other to talk about Taylor Brown's move. <laughs> and in the meantime, Doug McDermott gets another basket. Running the floor. And I think he was under the basket when he let that pick go. Here he comes again. Antoine. Oh, oh. That's a tough shot by Antoine Young. 55-40, Blue Jays now up by 15. Sims Edwards, call for the charge. Three charges taken tonight by the Blue Jays, Dick. So many different guys that are willing to put their body on line. Watch Managai anticipate, put his hands, and sell it. That's a part of it. Managai does a really good job. It helps that he's light in the, with his frame, but he does a nice job of really selling the contact, and that's a part of it. Twenty-three charges on the season. This is the 15th game. There's McDermott Murder. again. McDermott. He is now unstoppable. I mean, the, the Braves have no answer for him as he has 21. Simple flex cut, flex screen. McDermott Time catches out. it and scores. Timeout on the floor. 15:45 to go in the ball game. Blue Jays up now 17, 57 to 40. Creighton on a 6-0 run over the last 41 seconds. Braves will have the basketball. But Creighton has not missed in the first four minutes and change here. As they're 6 of 6 from the floor. Doug McDermott now with 21 points and three rebounds, 10 of 13 from the floor. And we give Doug McDermott a lot of credit, but the guy who doesn't get enough credit is Greg McDermott. I mean, he diagrammed some plays that are just Beautiful. I mean, he is shredding Bradley with X's and O's and set plays to free up different guys for looks. Hey, 
misses. Woods with it. Creighton sniffed out a set play to get Taylor Brown a shot. Sharon Woods. Look at Brown with the rebound going right over Grant Gibbs. Fresh 35 for the Braves. Brown throws it back out to Lemon Jr. Sharon Woods, the gunner. He's not shy. He comes in shooting. He's one of those guys that hasn't enjoyed success scoring the ball yet, but he's aggressive when he gets in the game. Grant Gibbs draws the foul. That's going to be on Thompson. Did you see the little stutter step right at the elbow, right at that moment within the drive where it was like, okay, I'm either going to kick it or I'm going to keep going. Watch the stop and go to draw the foul. He just took Woods right out of his shoes. Yeah. Time out on the floor. Blue Jays at 57-43. Back to the Carver Arena right after these messages. Great Blue Jay basketball can be seen all season long right here on your KMTV Action 3 News Station. Our next telecast coming up on January 25th as the Blue Jays will be on the road to face the Drake Bulldogs. The Blue Jays already a 76-59 winner over the Bulldogs on January 3rd. Our next telecast coming up on the 25th of January as we head on over to Des Moines to take on the Bulldogs in what is the Missouri Valley Conference's longest running rivalry between the Bulldogs and the Blue Jays. Travis Justice, Nick Ball with you at Carver Arena in Peoria, Illinois with the Blue Jays on top of the Bradley Braves, 57 to 43. Good start to the second half for the Blue Jays. Done a better job taking care of the ball. Only one turnover in the first five minutes and just great success offensively. Again, have not missed a shot yet in the second half. Wichita State, a winner in the Missouri Valley Conference today, 10 points better than Southern Illinois. Missouri State gets a win at Indiana State, 69-63. Sycamore struggling a little bit. Illinois State picks up another win, beating Evansville, 75-73. Jackie Carmichael hits a, his first career three at the buzzer to down the Purple Aces of Evansville. Gibbs goes one for two. 58-43. There's Lemon Jr. Brown. Taylor Brown, that's what the Blue Jays don't want. So nope. Taylor Brown heating up. Don't want him to get going at all here, Greg McDermott. That's pretty special, though, to come off a double screen and catch and shoot for Taylor Brown. Throw on Antoine Young. Great job from Managa. Shot fake, one dribble, draw the defense, give up a good shot for a great shot. That's what makes this Creighton team special is their willingness to pass the ball. Looks like Gibbs got all ball. They're going to call Grant Gibbs in the foul. Gibbs doesn't like it. See, as Taylor Brown getting used to the fact that a double team is going to come from Echenique in the middle, so he quickly catches and spins away from it baseline. Now he'll go to the free throw line. Brown at the line for the first time tonight on the season, 80% from the charity strike. It's the first one. Man, goggles have just come a long way. It's amazing. Well, you know, should we expect anything less? His mom is a former international model. Right. So he has some style. Gotta have some of that swag. <laughs> some of that look. Dad was an NBA player. Yeah. Mom was a model. Got the looks. Got the, got the game. It doesn't have the free throw. have taken advantage of great turnovers, Nick. Well, you shouldn't have to help. That's unique. You should be able to handle Thompson one-on-one. -on -one. In and out. Who are they going to call the foul on? Antoine? Yes, Antoine Young called the foul. I said the Braves are like a bad itch that won't go away. Blue Jays have been up by 17 here in the second half. See, Sims Edwards just runs right to the rim on the shot. Very athletic group. Him and Walt Lemon Jr. and Taylor Brown. Just you let them run and jump, they're going to get a lot of rebounds, wreak a lot, a lot of havoc. 
Jays need a stop. Doug McDermott got away with a foul out by the half court line as he was knocked over Woods, but it's another spike, not a block, a spike from Gregory Achenike. Does a good job of keeping the ball in play. That's what good shot blockers do, but then Taylor Brown cleans up the mess and goes to the free throw line. Brown now with 12. He leaves Bradley. He's had a good second half. He only had three at the break. Yeah, he's been aggressive and you knew he was going to get going at some point. Good scores are, are going to find a way. Brown hits them both. Graves just down 11. You see, Woods' pressure on Antoine Young has disrupted some things offensively for, for Creighton. Doug for three. Doug McDermott from the top of the key. This Bradley crowd doesn't know it, but it's being treated to a great offensive performance. Well, it's so tough because they're in a set where Doug's going to most of the time go down to the block, and he takes a step in, pops out. Next thing you know, he's knocking down a three and trotting the other way. Doug couldn't hold on to a timeout by the Braves. 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here. Tough one because that was right in Doug's hands. Yeah, Doug had it. You got to be. A, don't want to bring the ball down. You want to keep it high and chin it and be strong with it. And that's what Coach McDermott is telling his son right now: just be a little bit stronger with the ball. See that? Look at it. Watch how. Usually Doug goes low, but pops up, and Taylor Brown gets caught snoozing. He gets a wake-up call from McDermott. Doug with 24. Right at his average, 23.9 coming into tonight. So we really got to lock in on, on Taylor Brown's going to take a seat, but you really got to lock in on him for the rest of the way here because he's going to be the guy that is the catalyst to any sort of comeback for Bradley. Foul on Josh Jones. You know, if you're Gino Ford, you, you're looking at the scoreboard, and you're down 63-49. But he's got to be happy with his team's play today because they've had some brutal outings to start the Missouri Valley Conference. Well, they've continued to battle and fight against, you know, a ranked team, really the darling of the Missouri Valley Conference. They've continued to battle and fight. But you got to finish it if you're Brad. Sims Edwards falling away, in and out. Here come the Blue Jays. Up to Managa. Jahens Managa in transition. Good bucket by the Blue Jays. Job by Managa at the, right at the basket to shield his body or shield the ball with his body from Sims Edwards and then score. Woods over to Eastman. Long three in and out. Echenique goes up strong. Inside McDermott. Look at that spin move. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Put him in the spin cycle. A little move to the middle and went to the other side. Rebound. Here they, and they, you can hear the coaches. They want to push the pace. Metal to the metal. Antoine. Inside to Doug. He's unstoppable. Give him 28. Antoine gets to the piece of the paint, and McDermott does the rest. He's so creative underneath the basket and finding ways to score. What he is supposed to do. And just like that, the Blue Jays have 20, 69, 49. 
when you got to be careful with quick shots if you're Bradley because if they don't go down Creighton is going to have the pedal to the metal pushing it in transition started with a man of God layup and then it finished with two buckets from McDermott but you go back to those final those last two buckets from McDermott how do you stop those I mean, <laughs> he just can't let him catch I mean it's one of those things he's a guy that well, once he catches you, you're beat this is special watch Doug as he catches little look to the inside to shake him and then go to the opposite side of the bat of the, of the glass to score Creighton on a 9-0 run over the last minute 45 Doug McDermott, 13 of 16 for the field. He's got 28, folks. This doesn't happen a lot. People don't score 28 points and miss three shots. You see why Jay Billis said he was the midseason player of the year, said he was the most consistent offensive player in the country from the standpoint of points and rebound. They want the shot clock at 30 seconds. That's a dead ball situation. That means we have a timeout on the floor. Blue Jays up 20. Back to Carver Arena after these messages. Doug McDermott's career high of 35 came last month in a game at Tulsa. He's on track. 28 tonight. Look at Dougie underneath. Well, good creativity from Antoine Young and then just finds a way. You know, you say, how do you stop that? Well, you just can't let him catch. That's where it starts. If he's around the rim and can get the ball past his shoulders, can get it up, he's proven that 60% of the time it's going to go in every time. 28 points, five rebounds. The only knock on Doug, he leads the team in turnovers. I mean, <laughs> that's the only thing you can come up with. Man, you're critical. <laughs> I am, aren't I? It's tough. It's tough to, to find blemishes in his game, but he's been special tonight. Up 20. Here's Eastman. Oh, the hoop and the arm. Jahans Managa. Third. third personal on Jahans. Drive from Eastman. He's giving Creighton problems getting into the paint. Strong finish. Again, if you're going to go foul somebody, you don't want to even let the ball get up to the backboard. No opportunities for three-point plays. So Eastman at the line. He's got seven. Make it eight. Trying to disrupt Creighton's timing just a little bit. Did it with Woods on Antoine Young. Now Walt Lemon Jr. just pressuring Antoine Young up the floor. See if the Jays continue to attack and go inside to Echenique. There it is. Back out. Josh Jones. Grant Gibbs. Off of Eastman. They belong to the Blue Jays. Fresh 35. I know he didn't make the shot, but that's such a good play from Josh Jones. Feeds the post, kicks it out, shot fake, under control, draws the defense, kicks it out. That's a play he couldn't make and didn't make last year. Well, I was going to say, he would have taken the three-pointer. Yes. See the growth and the coaching from Coach McDermott just slowly setting in. He feed yeah, the feed inside. The post. Back to Antoine Young. In and out. Those are good shots, though. That's where Creighton's got to keep going, feeding the post, especially with Echenique. 69-52. Brown back in for the Braves. He had a short breather. Scramble for it. Crosser. 10 on the shot clock. Crosser. And they say he walked to the basketball. And here comes Doug McDermott. He got about what, two or three minutes on the bench. Comes in for Echenique. See if he can add to his total. A lot of basketball left. 9.57. When Doug's 13 of 16, and at least two of his misses have been bunnies right around the basket that he usually makes. And he missed a three. He missed two layups, and yeah. he missed a three. Foul 
foul on Doug McDermott trying to seal and Coach McDermott bleeding with him. Said Doug hooked the defender trying to post up. So Bradley in the one and one. Well, from here on out. Player control foul. This morning, Coach McDermott stopped shoot around and said, if we do four things, we'll win this game. He said transition defense, rebound the ball, guard dribble penetration. The last one was don't foul. Keep them off the free throw line. Tough shot. Oh, Evan Jr. was a tough shot. Doug snags it, races for the rebound. Taragi, long three from the corner. Look at McDermott with the rebound. Then the spin off the glass. The garbage man, once again, right place, right time. Weak side rebound. Oftentimes, those shots from the corner are going to go to the other side. And he scores. 30 points for Doug. Five away from his career high. You know, it's demoralizing for a team. You prepare for him all week and know that Doug McDermott's the second leading scorer, and then he comes in and just imposes his will, and it can break your spirit. 71-52. Brown takes the three. Bucket when they need it. Taylor Brown, that was 16. Shiok with the foul, trying to deny Rocky the basketball. Josh Jones really trying to ratchet up the pressure here on the ball, Bradley. Antoine Young. Goes up strong. No foul call. Here come the Braves in transition. Dyrikis. Good look by the Braves. Nice pass from Walt Lemon Jr. in transition. They left Dougie wide open for three. People now are starting to notice. 33. You, you don't know, now you know. Taylor Browns got burned on the same play again. Got cut under a screen, and McDermott makes him pay. Taylor Brown heads up. Antoine Young just let that ball slip out of his hands. Doug to Josh Jones in the corner. Good play for McDermott there. That's a good shot from Jones. About as athletic of a guard as the Valley has to offer. Out of bounds. Going to be turned over by the Blue Jays. Timeout on the floor. Braves still not going away. 74-62, back to Carver Arena after these messages. Nick Baugh, you like what you see out of Doug McDermott? Well, activity on the glass is something people have come accustomed to see with Doug McDermott, weak side rebound and the score, and then the same situation, Brown gets kind of underneath, you know the rules, especially against Dougie. Hand down, man down, McDermott with 33 points, two of three from beyond the arc. But again, 74-62, the Braves not going away. No. Creighton is led by as many as 20. That was at the 11-22 mark. So in the last two minutes and three seconds, Bradley on a 10-3 run. 
And Taylor Brown has really played well in this second half. As Brown only had three points at the break, now has 18, 15 second half points for Brown. And, and, and great turnovers really keeping the Braves in it. The Braves with 19 points up at 12 Blue Jay turnovers. Brown, he's feeling it. Got to be careful. Nine point game. Big minutes here for the freshman to handle the ball because the pressure's really been ratcheted up. Watch McDermott on a pen in. Doug McDermott. <laughs> a career high 36. And now it's fun just to see the reaction of what people are, are witnessing tonight. A career high 36 for Doug McDermott. He's 16 of 19 from the field. Three three pointers. Let's see Kip Kissinger saying something. Look at this set play as Coach McDermott again shredding Bradley with a set play, and his son is pretty dang good. Off the screen, buries the three. Unbelievable performance offensively. And we've seen him a ton. And maybe we were starting to take it for granted, but we're going to start seeing a time, whether it's this year or next year, when you go to opposing arenas, people are going to be paying just to come see Doug McDermott play. Right, right. Much like they did with Kyle Corbin. Much like they did Hersey Hawkins here when he was at Bradley. When Larry Bird at Indiana State. I mean, that, in that's the, the type. In the Mount West Conference, much like they did with Jimmer Fredette. Yeah. Because, again, the national pundits are starting to take notice. Again, Doug was on the Scott Van Pelt show. Doug was featured in an article from CBS Sports college basketball writer Jeff Goodman. And then this morning with Jay Billis picking him as the midseason player of the year. People know who number three is now. Ten point Blue Jay lead. Good pass. Right side edge and EK. And that's what people have got to appreciate. Not only can he score, but he makes everybody around him better. So just got great basketball feel. Coach's son obviously just... All those conversations at the dinner table, and talking about hoops and watching film, watching games, good instincts there from McDermott. And he gets it to go. They're going to call a foul on Doug. No, on Grant Gibbs, rather. His fourth. Gibbs I didn't think it was on one. him. Looked like Eastman got away with a travel. But Gibbs got his hand in there. As because McDermott was showing his hands, and Gibbs got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Fourth personal foul. Now Gibbs will have to take a seat. He's been looking to get the Braves back into the single digits. Missed that one. Eastman's played really well off the bench. His bench points big time in favor of Bradley. Managaw can't handle it. Lemon Jr. Hello. Antoine's got to be a ball handler. Gibbs, usually that second point guard on the floor. Antoine's got to really be strong. 79-71. Blue Jays have led by as many as 20 here in the second half. Braves not going away. Got the switch. Eastman on McDermott. It's what they want. Doug McDermott finally misses. Then the rebound by Enchinike to Doug McDermott. 38 for number three. Crowd is happy he just finally missed. You know what's played well is Echenique, too. Got to credit him. He's really doing some good things. 12 points for him. And a nice pass to Doug McDermott. Look at that heads-up play by Doug McDermott. Like father, Sliding. like son. We could, you could hear him right as Doug was going to call timeout. Coach McDermott was screaming it as well. What and we continue to witness. Let me put this into perspective. Antoine Young was honored earlier this season as a senior for scoring his 1,000th point. Doug McDermott's going to hit that in about two more games as a sophomore. Yeah. In, in a season and a half. <laughs> yes. He's taking a look at Walt Lemon Jr. go up to the top floor and finish it. But, no, you're exactly right. What Doug's been able to do scoring is, is truly a, a sight to behold. And you were mentioning Gregory Echenique. As Doug McDermott has a career-high 38, 
Echenike with a quiet double-double at 12 points, 10 rebounds. Well, he hasn't missed a shot, and he hasn't missed a free throw. And, and this is where, if I'm Greg McDermott, wouldn't wait too long. You can buy another 33 seconds till the under four media timeout to come back with Gibbs because ball handling is going to be a premium right now as Gibbs on the bench with four personal fouls. Nice to have a senior point guard who's led the Missouri Valley Conference in assisted turnover ratio two straight seasons. Bradley Faithful doing their best to cheer on the Braves. Antoine Young. Right inside. He can choose in his spots. Knifing through the defense. Gets one to go down. athletic Bradley Brave, but he's really done a good job of getting in the paint and making some plays as he spoon feeds Lemon Jr. a three. Antoine. Greg McDermott wanted a foul. Brave's going to want a bucket. Tyreka Sims Edwards in and out. Echenike with his 11th rebound. Good board from Echenike and Greg McDermott wanted to slow things down. Josh Jones, 15 on the shot clock. Creighton with two Josh horses in. on the paint. Five on the shot clock, here's Young with it. Shot clock violation, Blue Jays can't get a shot off. Another turnover, timeout on the floor. Under three minutes to go. We got a good one in the Missouri Valley Conference. We told you Carver Arena is the danger zone. The Braves still in it. Blue Jays up 83-74 back after this. Handheld. Welcome back to Carver Arena. The great Blue Jays lead the Bradley Braves by nine. Antoine Young is creating. So worried about Echenique and McDermott on the block, on the pick and roll. That lane's wide open. Antoine Young taking what the defense gives him and scores a big basket. But Bradley right in this game. 83-74, 2.58 left. Have to guard Taylor Brown, who's exploded in this second half with 18 points in the second half, 21 total points. It'll be a nice luxury that Grant Gibbs has checked back into the game. The second half, a lot like the first half, the Blue Jays Largest lead in the first half was 17. Braves got it back down to 10 by the halftime break. Largest lead for the Blue Jays in the second half has been by 20. It's now a nine point ball game. Bradley with the basketball. That's really guard Taylor Brown. Taylor Brown, he's feeling it. Taylor Brown for three. He has 24. A great individual performance because he only had three at the half. 83-77. Nine, nine, on the on the nine on the shot clock. Josh Jones now with five. McDermott for three. Off the mark. What Blue hustle Jays get the rebound. Grant Gibbs credit him for hustling after the loose ball off the, off the long rebound. Even if you can't get it, go tip it and keep, a, keep it alive. That's what Gibbs did. Turnover by the Blue Jays. Nyrika Sims Edwards and a block on Antoine Young. Credit Jake Eastman for sniffing out that play. Play that Creighton has won, a, ran a couple of times. Eastman tips it away, dives on the floor, and there's the block, the double block. It's just been turnovers for the Jays. 15 turnovers now. Miss by Sims Edwards. Oh, 
Really got a rebound now for the Jays. He goes one for two. Five point Blue Jay lead. Blue Jays are in with Antoine Young, Doug McDermott, Grant Gibbs, Josh Jones, and Gregory Echenique. Minute 40. McDermott with 38, looking for it inside. Blue Jays going to be patient on offense, playing with five. I like that timeout. And Greg McDermott wants a timeout. Taylor Brown has been the spark for the Bradley Braves here in the second half. He's got 24 points total. Not bad for a guy who had three at the break. He's five for five from behind the three-point line. And he's one of the best the Valley has to offer as well. And he's really asserted himself nicely in the second half. Credit him for sticking with it. Even in the midst of some foul trouble and some turnover problems in that first half. He had five turnovers in the first half. And now with 15 on the shot clock, the initial look for Greg McDermott trying to get it inside to Doug McDermott didn't pop open. Creighton got a little bit stagnant and flustered. Now they'll probably go with a high pick and roll. Minute 32 to go in the game, 15 on the shot clock. The Jays trying to stop a Bradley 7-0 run. Watch McDermott hanging in the corner, maybe as a decoy into a high pick and roll with Antoine Young and Ethan Rogge, and they can't step off McDermott, and Antoine Young can have a free pass. Again, the turnovers have plagued the Blue Jays. Trying to get a throw over, one there. Grant Gibbs. That's a tough miss. He's been thought about it. Here's Sims Edwards. A foul on Taylor Brown. That's big. That's close, especially in this juncture of the game. Where a lot of push and shove going on in the paint. Taking a look at it as Antoine Young got switched on to Taylor Brown. And as the shot goes up, said there was some pushing going on with Taylor Brown. Oh, that's tough. That's unfortunate there for Bradley. Two timeouts left. Got to be strong with the ball for the Blue Jays. Jay's still not in the bonus. You got to really be strong because they're going to really come after it for some steals. That's going to be a foul on Sharon Woods. Sharon Woods hit his first team foul six. There's the 16 foul. So now the next foul, the Blue Jays will be shooting the one and one. All these press breaks. First thing Creighton does that shoot around, walk through all this. Another foul with no time running off the clock. Not all that bad for Bradley. I know you'd like to have an opportunity to try and create a turnover, but watch as Brown is going to hold McDermott. And he goes down. Doug came up holding that right shoulder. A chance for 39 and 40 for Doug at a huge juncture in the game where he really needs it. So Doug with 38. Going to the line. He's been there once tonight, one for one. He's got 39. Of all of his points, each they're the biggest. Doug now with 40, the first Blue Jay to go for 40 points since Cabell Witter did it back in March of 2008 against these Bradley Braves. He had 42. 85 78, under a minute. Gibbs. And a foul on Grant Gibbs. That's it for Gibbs. And that's huge because Gibbs is not only the ball handler. The secondary ball here behind Antoine Young, but he's the decision maker on triggering the ball in, uh, tr triggering the ball in, 
on the press break. Taking a look at it. Boy, this is real close. Looks like Gibbs just goes straight up. Wow. That's a tough call. That's a really difficult call. Greg Gibbs. Still in a little bit of shock about it. So Gibbs fouls out. Gibbs finishes with nine points and six assists. So Gibbs is usually that decision maker, Travis, on the press break in terms of in, inbounding the ball. See who they go with. They probably have Rogi throw the ball. Solid outing for Grant Gibbs. Consistent. Brown with 24 at the line. On any other night, it's a pretty good scoring night. Star of the game. He's definitely been Bradley's star in this second half. It's good to see him back out on the floor after that scary heart situation last year. Managa pulls down the rebound. Ooh, pretty close to getting tied up for a jump ball. A quick foul called by Kip Kissinger. That's going to put John Hans Managa at the line. Managa with 11. Managa has not been to the free throw line tonight. He hasn't been to the free throw line a lot this season, only 15 times, but has made 12, puts him at 80%. This could be a real long 43.9 seconds. 48 hours mystery coming up in its entirety after the ball game. Hits them both. 87-79. Dyrikas Sims Edwards. Timeout, Bradley Braves. 87-81. Now the defensive switch. Well, and I, and Rocky I, comes back in for the offense. Yeah, coming in for free throw yeah. shooting, and he'll probably be the guy to, to trigger it in. I cannot stress how important it is that Grant Gibbs is out of this game. He is that secondary ball handler and makes all the decisions throwing the ball in, and that's the most stressful part about breaking a press because they're going to come with a foul right away, but you've got to get the ball in bounds. Two timeouts left for Creighton. Bradley out of timeouts now for the final 35 seconds. A lot of good free throw shooters on the floor. Jays are 13 of 15 from the free throw line in the game and have knocked down four clutch free throws here in the final minute. And this is why you walk over these things at shoot around. All different sorts of press breakers. They may become tedious and monotonous for a player, but you're happy you do all those things and work on all those things in times like this. Both teams shooting lights out. Bradley shooting 50% from the field. The Jays shooting 60%. Beautiful. Get it to McDermott. There's the foul. Going to be on Eastman. Nice usage of running the baseline there as it was all misdirection as Antoine Young started to sprint to his left, came back, and allowed Doug McDermott to set up his cut and time it. It's like a quarterback and a receiver playing football there, and now Doug looking for 41 and 42. Big shot. Three for three from the line. in the second half. And Bradley's fought. They've hung in there. They've ratcheted up the defensive pressure, forced turnovers. <laughs> 42 points. Career high. Continuing to be added for Doug McDermott. Shia, Shia. 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 
Usagi wishes he had that one back as a ticky tack foul. As Seahawks going up for a layup. Taking a look at it, Creighton goes in some three quarter court pressure. Slow him down, nice pass into Sheok, and then if Rogi's gonna foul him, you have to hammer him. You gotta make sure he didn't make it. Right. <laughs> Big Four. miss by Sheok, and there's McDermott with the rebound. Josh Jones would go to the line. I wish Doug McDermott maybe would have held on to that one a little bit longer. Understand that eventually they're probably going to have to foul as Jones now go to the free throw line. Has not been there tonight. And has been awful from the free throw line. 7 of 15. 47%. But a good shooter just is, doesn't go there a lot, so he's not comfortable. Yeah. 21.2 seconds. Make this one to make it a three possession game. One of two is Josh Jones. 20 seconds to go. Dyrika Sims Edwards for three, in and out. There's Echenique with a rebound, and that should do it. The Blue Jays to McDermott. Look out below, he's gonna end with 44. 6.2 is the correct time, 6.2 remaining. 44 for what Doug McDermott, performance. and what a way to end the night with a dunk. The exclamation point, 92-83. That's a bad boy, they Doug put, McDermott. They had to put more time on the clock because needed to stop after the made basket. Final shot, buzzer sounds. Blue Jays win, 92-83. to 83. Doug McDermott with a career-high 44 points. Taylor Brown, not a bad night either for the Bradley Braves, he has 25. Creighton now 13 and two overall. Two and one, or three and one rather, in the Missouri Valley Conference, and now five and one in true road games. Bradley falls to five and 11 overall, 0 and four in the Missouri Valley Conference. Nick Boss standing by, he's waiting for Greg McDermott to come back and have a word, maybe two. It was a heck of a ball game as Blue Jays led by as many as 20 in the second half. The Bradley Braves would not go away, chipped away. Taylor Brown, 25 points. Let's go over to Nick, who's standing by with Coach McDermott. Coach, you guys led as much as 20 in that second half, but Bradley kind of fought and hung around there. What are you most proud of that the Jays were able to find a way to win? I'm proud that we outscored them because uh, we, we didn't defend the way we needed to. And once again, we let some of their best players really go off. And, you know, but you know, we, we played the odds. This is a team that had not shot the three-point shot well all year. We tried to plug it up and keep them off the free throw line, and to their credit, they knocked down a bunch of threes. Doug finishes with 44 points. The explanation point with the dunk there. What, what can you say about uh, about your son? Well, he was he was efficient, and our, our guys did a good job of spacing the floor and get him the basketball. But uh, you know, I'm glad he had it tonight offensively because we weren't very good on the defensive end. What, what else did you like? Gregory Echenique didn't miss a shot, made a lot of his free throws. He had good contributions across the board. Well, you know, we played our starters pretty heavy minutes tonight, and. Uh, because I felt like Bradley felt like they were in the game the whole time. I never thought we could throw that knockout punch. And proud of the guys that they stuck to it. The crowd got into the game here, and we were able to keep our head about us and uh, execute some pretty good press offense there late. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks, Nick. Nick, I know Doug's waiting for you. Why don't you have a great quick word with Doug McDermott? Let's bring him in. Dougie McDermott finishes with 44 points. Pretty good rhythm tonight. What was working for you? I uh, was just feeling it, man. Uh, just one of those nights. Uh, teammates did a really good job of finding me. We didn't do what we wanted to do defensively, but we scored more points than them, so that's good tonight. Double teams were coming, but you still found a way. What are you thinking about offensively when you know they're going to come with a double team? You still got to find a way to score. Just go. We're going to get into your mind right now. What's going through your head? 
I mean, main thing is just running in transition. I think I got a lot of points uh, just running in transition. Antoine did a good job at your hands, all those guys. So that's mainly the, that's the main thing and crashing the boards and got a couple open threes here tonight. Greg set some good screens for me, so I got to thank him as well. Got to thank your dad for drawing up some good plays, right, too? Exactly. <laughs> Hey, and Jay Billis called you the midseason player of the year. That's pretty high, a pretty high honor there for Mr. Billis. I'll take it. I'll take it. Good job. Doug McDermott, 44 points. Congrats. Back to you, Travis. Career high for Doug McDermott. We'll be back right after this to wrap things up from Carver Arena. You witnessed greatness tonight. Our Burton Plumbing player of the game is Doug McDermott, 18 of 23 from the field, a career high 44 points. He was three for five from behind the three point line, five for five from the free throw line. Safe to say the best game Doug McDermott's played as a Jay. When your plumbing's hurting, just call Burton. The Blue Jays lead Carver Arena with a 92 83 win, improving to 13. And two overall, three and one in the Missouri Valley Conference. For our entire Telepro crew here at Carver Arena, thanks for watching Crate Blue Jay Basketball. Coming up next, 48 Hours Mystery in its entirety.